Hi everyone, I'm Jay and this is the Camden Stitch. Hi, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, we are not in the yellow chair. This is just a chitty chatty update video where I'm going to tell you about what I've been up to, what I've been sewing, how they're co how things are coming out, a little bit of a life update. If there might be a bit of noise because um, Betsy's madly playing with a new toy and she's like hurtling across the room with it. Um, so, how are you? How have things been after Christmas? My Christmas was lovely. Obviously you saw my vlog of my Christmas day and that was really really lovely but then unfortunately a couple of days after Christmas um, Ian had a death in his family which we were kind of expecting for quite a long while. If you follow my fabric shop, the fabric edit, then you'll know I had to cancel my December sale because of illness in the family and that's because basically we, this event has kind of been um, in the pipeline for quite a long time. So Ian had to hurtle up to Scotland straight after Christmas to go and help clear out houses and organise things. He was away for a week and it was a little bit grim. I did go to the pool once, which I filmed once and told you about, but um, and that was really good. And I also met up with Dee, who watches this channel. Hi, Dee. Um, and yeah, we met in the Everyman Cinema in King's Cross because there was a quite a little, quite a quiet coffee shop up there and we had the nicest afternoon chit-chatting and we got on really well and I really, really enjoyed it and bless her, she bought me some birder magazines which are always welcome, a few old birders and I really, really enjoyed looking through them Dee. Um, so that was really nice but unfortunately after that things got a little bit bleak from this end and in the end Ian had to come back a day early from Scotland bless him what would I do without that man um so that was a great relief to me but now he's got to go back up again for the funeral so it's just been a bit difficult since Christmas but we're back in the swing of things now I like my routine I always struggle when things go off piste from the routine and now we're getting back into the routine. I went to hypnotherapy today, it was really really enjoyable, really nice. I mean it's the nicest type of therapy, you know all the therapy I used to have is just like let's think about the worst bits of your life and chew them over for an hour and then you'll leave and you'll be stuck with all those feelings and memories and then next week we can just dredge them all up again. Um, but this is like no, lie down and drift off to a beautiful place and be told how wonderful things could be. And so considering the other unpleasant dredgy type of therapy didn't particularly work for me, if this one doesn't work either, then this one's a much more pleasant waste of money. So uh, I'm persevering with that for a little while. I'm enjoying it, it's just a pleasant experience. You come out feeling pretty good. Um, and I've also found that my pain has been great on the couple of days after hypnotherapy and I don't know if that's just because you go into a more relaxed state or what. But anyway, enough of that. I thought I'd t tell you what I've been sewing since Christmas. So after the um, tra traumatic yet wonderful coat saga, I couldn't sew for a few days. I just couldn't get into it. But I had cut out these three sweatshirt dresses that I showed you and I have sewn them up now and I got the buttonholes done um, and all they need now is the buttons on. I've already got the buttons on one of them and hemmed them but these two I had to order the buttons so I couldn't do them there and then. So this is how they're looking. Very sort of big, sloppy comfy t-shirt dress, uh, sweatshirt dress. I'm really looking forward to this one. I think this one is going to look brilliant. This is the leopard print one. Um, and then this is one I've finished already, which I've just realised needs to go in the wash. But that's the front. So it's got this fabulous 
houndstooth and then this is the back and unfortunately I mean I've put these great big buttons on but unfortunately they're kind of lost in the pattern um, which is a real shame because I think that those sort of buttons kind of really go with that type of you know that kind of 60s vibe the cocoony sort of dress um, but anyway I really like that I've worn it quite a few times it's just so comfy and looks quite cool with tights um, and sort of, I've worn it with like bright coloured tights a few times I will do a mates video where I show you all these things photographed I just wanted to give you a bit of chit chat about what I've been doing the other thing I've been doing is I made this pinafore and I can't remember if I mentioned this pinafore to you but I saw it on a Pinterest board a while ago so I've lost a nail by the way my nails are desperate to be done and I absolutely loved it and I've been trying since maybe mid-December no earlier maybe to self-draft it because look at how simple it is it's got bust darts, A-line skirt, it should be so easy, and yet it isn't. And I made four different versions, twirls and a couple of versions which are wearable, but they're, the fit isn't great. And in the end, I thought to myself, I'm just not cracking this. I'm going to see if I can find this pattern anywhere. I could only find it in America. Fortunately, I found it for 10 quid, including shipping, which is a lot of money for a pattern for me, but um, it's not out, out, it wasn't completely out of reach or ridiculous. You know, some of them were coming up at like 25 quid, shipped from Australia or whatever, and it wasn't really viable, but yeah, I found one. So I got the pattern through, made it up and really happy with how it's come out this is the one that I've made do you know I will I will pop it on it hasn't been pressed but I'll pop it on to show you this is how it looks really happy with the silhouette um, with you know a polar neck underneath it I've actually got these buttons which you can't quite see in this light but um, they're quite cute got little pockets on it there are a few fitting adjustments I want to make. So here's my shopping list of fitting adjustments. I could wear it like this, it's fine, but it's a dress that I would like to make multiple times in lots of different colors and lots of different lengths and variations. So I want to get it perfect. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna do a small narrow shoulder adjustment to bring these in, right? I am going to slightly shorten these because they're a little bit long for me and lower the neckline to compensate. I am going to lower the bust start by three centimetres. I'm going to shorten the bodice by six centimetres because my pockets are too low for me um, and yeah, I'm just a short person and all my, sh all my shortness is in my bodice. Um, and my back can you see this sort of pokey bit here you can't really see it's got there you can see it's got like a bit of a fin at the back I'm gonna slice that out um, to curve that out smaller shoulder just a bit smaller Oh, that's it five, five different adjustments and I will be grand what do you think would you faff about making all these adjustments or do you make something and look at it and think I'm happy with that it'll do um I've been thinking about my make nine and I will do a separate video where I talk about it in detail and show you all the pics and everything but I was thinking one of the things that I failed on a bit last year is I twirled twirled I twirled quite a lot of garments and got them to the stage where they were fitted or I knew what adjustments needed to be made and then I got bored of them and moved on and that is very kind of 
the opposite of, of what I want to be doing. It's bad practice. I want to twirl things, get the fit perfect, and then bang out several versions of that because, you know, you've spent all the time and effort making something that you want to look, that is going to fit you beautifully. You know, you need to, you need to actually make it, don't you? Um, so my, on my make nine for next year is quite a few patterns that I've spent a long, a long time fitting, but then not actually finished up making up. Um, so there's going to be lots of repeats in there. So my make nine, there's only about seven different patterns, but I want to make about a hundred different versions of them. So I'll go into all the details and I've got sketches of what I want them to look like as well. So that'll be quite fun showing you that. So that's forthcoming. Oh, also birder videos forthcoming. I'm going to film that later. I just wanted to kind of check in with you, say hello. The other thing that I've been up to is I have been very much enjoying this book, Sewing for Fashion Designers. Now, obviously it says for fashion designers. I'm not really interested in fashion design. I am interested in, I mean, I don't really like fashion. The way I see it is fashion is, it's very much tied up with consumerism and making people want something that they don't need and want something new and I really disagree with that I like style right and I think that fashion and style are different things I think style is about looking good and it's not necessarily about creating a trend that lots of other people will want I think it's about creating something unique to yourself and so I'm not interested in developing a clothing line or anything like that I just want to make things that I really like and that are unique to me anyway that's by the by this book's brilliant I very much recommend it it goes into a lot of detail if you like books like the Reader's Digest Guide to Sewing it's kind of very much in that vein it's quite uh, methodical and step by step with all the sewing um different processes and that is really interesting I've been reading it on most days and I'm about three quarters of the way through so it's got a lot of meat in there the other thing that came today is this obviously because I started going to the gym I immediately think oh god I must make my own thing so I've ordered this swimming costume pattern which Laura Specky Seamstress Laura made up as well so I've got her kind of information about that I've also been uh, looking at a blueprint class on how to make swimwear and I've ordered some swimwear fabrics and I ordered the sew your own activewear book and I quite like it but I must say it's very much a pattern drafting book so all you get all you get are patterns for four blocks. A tight fitting top, a loose fitting top, tight fitting bottom, loose fitting bottom. So that is all you get. And then you get instructions about how to draft each pattern to make each garment. And some of the garments are really, really cool. I very much like them. So tops like that, they've got all this, these amazing rings of colour blocking around here. I really wear vests when I go to the gym, vests and leggings, and I think this vest is super, super cool. It's like this, so it's got three colour blocking sections, and then it's got this back section that's got this really cool like envelope closure. So it gives like a racer back, but with this envelope closure, I really like it. But like I said, um, I would be quite annoyed if I was one of the people who'd never drafted a pattern before and then got this because I, I think I'd find it a little bit overwhelming but I like it very much very interesting book and if you want to get into pattern drafting and you wear clothes like leggings and vests this is actually not a bad place to start because it's quite in depth with telling you how to draft everything so that's what I've been reading. That's what I've been making. I don't really feel like I've been mega, mega productive sewing wise. I think I've kind of really struggled to get into it. I don't know why. I've had a bit of a, haven't lost my sojo. I definitely am still wanting to sew things. I just generally, I think I felt blocked. I don't know why. Just found it difficult to walk the few paces from the sofa to the sewing machine and actually get going. 
Um, I don't know. Do you ever get like that? It's weird, isn't it? Anyway, I hope your weeks are going well. Like I say, I'll be back soon with some proper vlogs, but I thought um, this would be better than nothing, just to pop by and say hello. Um, I hope you enjoyed the seam allowance tutorial. I have hit on a bit of a snag with all these drafting tutorials that I filmed. I did not film them like tutorials. What I did was I filmed me making these items. It's very different. If I was filming tutorials, I would have a proper camera set up, proper lights. I would be marking everything with Sharpie so that you can see the lines, sewing with different colored um, thread, etc. Now that is obviously completely separate to making something for yourself and it takes a lot of time. And to be honest, I don't think that I'm the right person to do that because lots and lots of other people have already done it on the internet and I don't think me doing it would take a lot of my time and energy and I don't think I would bring anything to the party with it. So I thought what I would do is just talk you through it as I was doing it. But when I'm going back and reviewing the footage, it's quite difficult to see because I'm obviously using a pencil because I'm having to erase lines and change them as I go along. I don't have a roving microphone, so my audio is not brilliant to hear all the time. So I don't know how much I'm going to be. I mean, I've filmed about 10 of these videos. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to salvage, but you're just going to have to bear with me while I work through all the footage and see see what I can salvage, see what is worth salvaging. The other thing I've got happening this week is I have to go to college uh, to do an assessment for my fashion course. I've been up in the air about whether or not to do it because of health. I'm going to give it a go. I have to take in a portfolio so I'm going to take in my fashion sketches and things like I'm going to show them how I plan outfits and talk about how I change patterns to draft them. I, obviously there's very few patterns that I've drafted from scratch but there are a lot of patterns that I've drafted quite significant that I've changed quite significantly from the paper pattern. So I'm going to talk about those things and the one I'm going to talk about really in detail is this one because you can see how it originally started. So that's one of my Freya hat dresses and this one because you can see there how I was planning the layout of the stripes before I cut the pattern. This was the finished dress. Um, and so, yeah, you can see my thought process and the design process that went into them. And then obviously I can talk about, oh, I'm holding it the wrong way around, there's the front. I can talk about the pattern drafting. So yeah, I'm going to, to do that on Friday. So let's hope that I feel all right for it and I get through it okay. Um, and that's it for my week. I hope you're having a fabulous week. I hope it's not the week from hell because I think people call it Blue Monday, don't they? The first week back after um, the holidays with all the blues. Anyway, that is it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed my little ramble telling you about my week and I shall see you in a vlog very, very soon. Love you lots. Bye.